He is known for being a Chinese statesman, physician, and political philosopher. He is recognized for his instrumental role in the overthrow of the Qing dynasty during the Xinhai Revolution. He is Sun Yat-sen, the father of the nation, in the Republic of China. In the early 20th century, China was a nation in turmoil, with the oppressive Qing dynasty ruling over its people. But amidst this chaos, there emerged a visionary leader who would go on to shape the destiny of modern China. His name was Sun Yat-sen, a statesman, physician, and political philosopher. Sun Yat-sen, often hailed as the father of the nation, played a pivotal role in the overthrow of the Qing dynasty during the Xinhai Revolution. His remarkable leadership and unwavering commitment to change earned him the title of the forerunner of the revolution. What set Sun apart was his ability to transcend political divides, earning reverence from both the Communist Party in mainland China and the Nationalist Party in Taiwan. However, Sun's journey was not one without hardship. Despite his initial success in the revolution, he faced constant struggle and frequent exile. After resigning as the provisional president of the Republic of China, he found himself in Japan, seeking safety from the turbulent political climate. But he did not give up. He returned to southern China and founded a revolutionary government, challenging the warlords who held power over the nation. In his pursuit of a unified China, Sun even formed an alliance with the Chinese Communist Party, inviting representatives of the Communist International to Canton. However, he did not live to witness the ultimate success of his party. Sun Yat-sen passed away in 1925, succumbing to gallbladder cancer in Peking. But Sun's legacy is not confined to his role as a political leader. His philosophy, encapsulated in the three principles of the people, continues to resonate today. These principles include nationalism, the rights of the people, and the people's livelihood. Sun believed in the interconnectedness of these concepts, understanding that a nation's strength lies in its people's well-being and collective spirit. Sun Yat-sen's contributions to modern China and his political philosophy have left an indelible mark on the nation's history. His remarkable journey from exile to revolutionary leader serves as an inspiration to future generations, reminding them of the power of perseverance and the pursuit of a better future for all. Sun, born with the genealogical name Sun Deming, had a journey filled with different names that reflected various stages of his life. As a child, he was known by the pet name Tai Tseung. But it was during his schooling years that he received the name Sun Wan, a name that would accompany him for most of his life. Alongside this, he also had a courtesy name, Zaiji, and a baptized name, Rishin. However, it was during his time in school in Hong Kong that he acquired the art name Yatsen. This name would hold significant meaning for him, becoming one of the most recognizable names associated with him. Yet, it was the name Sun Zhongshan that resonated the most with the Chinese people. This name, derived from his Japanese name Kikori Nakayama, was given to him by Toten Miyazaki when he was in hiding in Japan. It became the most popular name associated with Sun in China. In fact, his birthplace city was renamed Zhongshan in his honor, shortly after his death in 1925, and has retained that name to this day. Zhongshan is one of the few cities in China named after individuals, and it serves as a lasting tribute to Sun's legacy. The significance of Sun's various names goes beyond mere nomenclature. Each name represents a different chapter in his life, from his childhood to his revolutionary activities. These names serve as a reminder of his resilience, adaptability, and enduring impact on Chinese history. Sun Yat-sen's journey towards shaping his philosophy in education began at a young age. At just 10 years old, he started his schooling in Hawaii, where he attended secondary school and met his childhood friend Lu Haodong. It was during this time that Sun's elder brother, Sun Mei, became a major contributor to his education and would later play a significant role in the overthrow of the Manchus. In Honolulu, Sun Yat-sen enrolled at Iolani School, where he immersed himself in subjects such as English, British history, mathematics, science, and Christianity. Although he initially struggled with the English language, Sun quickly adapted and even received recognition for his academic achievements from King David Kalakaua. After graduating in 1882, he continued his education at Oahu College for a short period before his brother grew concerned about Sun's increasing interest in Christianity and decided to send him back to China. Returning to China at the age of 17 in 1883, Sun reunited with his childhood friend Lu Haodong at the Beijidian Temple in Suihem. Witnessing the villagers' worship of the Beiji Emperor God and their dissatisfaction with ancient folk healing methods, Sun and Lu took a rebellious action by breaking the effigy. Their act angered the villagers, forcing them to flee to Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, Sun continued his studies at the diocesan home and orphanage, followed by the government central school. 
In 1886, Sun's educational journey took a turn towards medicine as he began studying at the Guangzhou Boji Hospital under the guidance of Christian missionary John G. Kerr. However, Sun's thirst for knowledge led him to seize an opportunity in 1887 when he heard about the opening of the Hong Kong College of Medicine for Chinese. Recognizing the advantages it offered, Sun promptly enrolled and eventually obtained his medical license in 1892, becoming one of only two students from his class to graduate. Sun Yat-sen's early years of education and philosophical exploration laid the foundation for his future endeavors. His exposure to various subjects, including Christianity, and his experiences in different cultural contexts shaped his perspective on life and society. As he once remarked, my life will recur in exactly identical fashion, Sun Yat-sen recognized the importance of learning from the past and embracing new knowledge to navigate the challenges of daily life. Sun's journey towards his revolutionary ideals and political career took an unexpected turn when he first encountered Christianity during his time at Iolani School in the early 1880s. The school, under the guidance of the Church of Hawaii, provided instruction in English, and it was here that Sun first came into contact with the teachings of Christianity. Little did he know at the time that this encounter would have a profound influence on his future path. As Sun delved deeper into his studies, he began to realize the potential parallels between a revolution and the salvation mission of the Christian Church. He saw in Christianity a powerful force for change, a belief system that could inspire and unite people towards a common goal. Sun's revolutionary ideals and his newfound understanding of Christianity became intertwined, shaping his vision for a better future. In a surprising turn of events, Sun made the decision to be baptized in Hong Kong, under the guidance of an American missionary named Reverend Charles Robert Hager. This decision was met with disdain from Sun's brother, but it only fueled Sun's determination to merge his Christian faith with his political aspirations. The bond between Sun and Reverend Hager grew stronger, as they shared a mutual understanding of the potential impact Christianity could have on Sun's future endeavors. Attending Tsai Church, founded by the London Missionary Society, Sun immersed himself in the teachings and community of Christianity. He saw in the church a beacon of hope and a vehicle for positive change. Sun's conversion to Christianity was not just a personal spiritual journey, but a reflection of his revolutionary ideals and his relentless push for advancement. Sun Yat-sen's embrace of Christianity and its influence on his political career were not mere coincidences. The teachings of Christianity provided him with a moral compass and a framework for his revolutionary objectives. It gave him the strength and conviction to fight for a better society, a society that echoed the principles and values he found in his Christian faith. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.